This week on What Do You Got, we're talking about video game spoilers. Stay tuned, weirdo. <laughs> You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking day. Oh, yeah. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to What Do You Got on Bro Down Podcast. I'm Andy Smith. I'm Tim Fulton. And this is where we come up with a random topic the other guy doesn't know about. I actually closed my ears this time. I'm trying to actually not know about it. Uh, this week is Tim's topic. Tim, what do you got? We're talking about, come on, I can hit the correct button, video game spoilers. Ooh. Specifically, how long does it take you before you cave and you look something up? Because you and I had a conversation earlier. Ooh. You were in a little bit of a unique situation because you were fighting a boss like yeah. a fucking nerd and you couldn't figure it out until yeah. you did. I did. Until you did. But it got my head spinning and thinking about like back in the day, there was no internet, you young whippersnappers. There you was had no to like print out cheat codes. You had to print out cheat codes. You had to go buy a book if you wanted a legit walkthrough, which that all that has changed. So, dude, the, like the OG us didn't have these options, but current day us, how long does it take us before you just say, "Fuck it, I gotta know." There, you know what, dude? The sad truth, and I'm gonna answer this, and and we're gonna talk about this. The sad truth, though, is that there's no games with campaigns anymore. There's very few. I, you know, I was a little bit worried about this topic going into it. Worried and excited because you and I have played very different games. Yeah, like we're both gamers, but we play different stuff. Like there's definitely a crossover, but we don't have the same no. kind of. No, it's like same, same, and we have some crossover, but again, it's not the same. But I, I do remember those, those, uh, those cheat code books, like the walkthroughs. Yeah. And like thinking how cool those books were and how much money those companies probably made. And now they're gone. Gone. They're all gone. But how long would it take me to get frustrated to the point where I look something up? I would definitely look up cheat codes, um, for games but if it was a game that I really, really liked and was into, I wouldn't look up anything because I would want to beat it myself. I go back and forth. If it was a game like GTA, I would look up cheat codes all day because it's just about like this game is literally just trying to create chaos. Yeah. So that's different. Yeah. But like other games. Like going back to your example, like say you're. Say you had a save right before you fought that boss and you played that battle over and over again and you just kept on losing. How many times do you lose before you say to yourself, I have to figure out how to kill this guy? Um, I would say... Eight! <laughs> <sighs> exactly. I would say that like nine... I would say probably seven out of ten times I would probably just accept the defeat. Okay. Um, but the thing that made this one different was that, like, because of the game mechanics in that game, he was just going to keep going through my shit. So I couldn't, like, accepting defeat wasn't an option. Even yeah. if it was like, all right, I figured out why and I figured out how I can do it, but I'm still going to lose this battle. Yeah. Like, that would be fine. But if I didn't figure it out, it was like, so then the game is over. Yeah. The game's over. I thought it was a glitch. <laughs> so, but I ended up figuring it out. And when I, when I first saw like the stat, I was like, that's not like, it didn't come out at me. And then I'm like, wait a minute. What? I'm like, for what? They just, they just OP them. Yeah. Like super ridiculous OP. I've been playing this one game that it's literally a riddle game. And he just came back. Hmm? Last turn I played, he just, he's standing outside my gates right now. <laughs> Sorry. But you know how to beat him now. Kind of. Yeah. So this one game, it's actually five games. They have like a little short series and it's a riddle game. So like, it's all about like, you have to open up a box. So you have to like figure out like oh. where buttons are and like figure out what they do and interact with this. And it's like, it's a puzzle. It's it's a, a video game puzzle and it gives you hints along the way. So I would notice I'd be stuck. I'd be stuck. I would see the hint. I would go, oh yeah. Okay. So like even just the hints. I would, like, fly through it. And so I got to the second game, and I was like, I'm not going to use those hints because I flew through the first one. And, it's like, I'm on very early on in the second one, and I'm just sitting there, and I'm looking at this wooden ship, 
and I have to do something with it. And I'm just can't fucking figure it out. But there's something glorious about that. Yeah, there is because you know that's why I don't like looking things up. And yeah. G- again, I looked up cheat codes. I did all that stuff, but it's not as satisfying. It's, it's not. not even in the same. It's not. It's like playing two different sports. Yeah. It's like you're playing a sport, but they're nothing alike. So the feeling that you get. There's a there was an example that somebody used on that where talking about like giving somebody a hint, right? And the example they used was if I showed you a picture, if I if I said, "Hey, I want you to tell me everything that you know, that everything that you remember about this picture." I'm going to give you 10 seconds to look at it. And they show you a picture and it's like uh, a grass field with some rocks and uh uh, it's got a, a sky landscape with some mountains in the back and some animals around, and there's a car in the middle of it and all this stuff. I showed it to you for 10 seconds. How do you describe that picture? Probably the way you just described it. Exactly. Now, if I say same picture, but I say I want you to – I'm going to show you a picture of a car, and I want you to tell me everything you remember about it. You're probably going to give me all details about the car. Probably. Right. That little hint, as simple as that is, you're not giving me any new information. You're not really even telling yeah. me what to do. You're just focusing my attention towards something. And you, you're like, all right, well, I, I would have remembered. Like if somebody said to somebody like, uh, so you wouldn't remember that if I didn't tell you about the car. A lot of people would be like, yes, I would have. Yeah, I and I get, I get that same way too. Yeah. Because like, and that's like a weird instant. And it might be true because- 100% the, true. The, hmm? it's, it's it's very true it's many times but getting there yourself is just different yes like the hints in my game would be like i wonder what such and such does and you're like oh yeah i do wonder what such and such does and you play around with it and you're like oh it flips open okay so now i can do this but and if you didn't get that hint you'd feel way more like i fucking did that. it might have taken me two hours yes but i eventually would have been like oh it's a and, thing it flips <laughs> and that game that you play that game is for that yeah, it's it, exactly. It's for not that. like you're stuck in a game that's a fast-paced game, and you just you just can't figure out some stupid thing that happens once, and you're like, "The fuck is this?" It's 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 made to make you think without the hints. I go back and forth on it a little bit because it's a, not in the same style, but we've played those uh, murder mystery board games where like you have to figure out who the killer is. You remember that time we had the picture? And you had oh, that the- was a fucking glitch in a, in a tabletop tangible game there was a glitch okay <laughs> there was legitimately a glitch yeah but like we're in the matrix bro it's like shit like that lingers on my head like what if i can't figure it out because it's something fucking dumb see that that pissed me off because and it's we i could, get that shit happens but for for everyone else who was not at that game which is only five people six people but it was basically like Murder mystery. They gave you six pictures of still frames of uh, surveillance cameras, and they say like, you know, there's a there's a clue in here. Dude, we looked at these pictures for like an hour and a half. Yeah, and there was nothing in there. So we finally looked in. It says, and it says for the hint, like clearly, picture number six has it has a person walking in the bushes, and we're like, no, no, it doesn't. It does not have a person walking in the bushes. And we literally stared at the picture for another hour. Yeah. <laughs> and we're like, it's, it does not have a person in it. It's not there. But And that's the problem where, like, you are you have 100 keys and a lock, but the person that gave you the keys took out the one. Well, let's just spit everywhere. You have COVID now. Um, <laughs> took out the. Uh, COVID. Took out the one that actually works. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It, it was like one of those. Uh, uh, I did one of those escape the rooms and it was a lot of fun. The one that I did, it was like this really cool. It was black and white and it was like this old looking house type thing. It was this dope scenario and everyone that was there was having a grand time. And there was this one part and they allow you two clues, two clues. And we got to this part and they're like, you have to make the paintings meet. And there's these two, not paintings, uh, pictures. And there's a picture of a father and son and they're on different ends and they're screwed into the wall and we're sitting there like, what do we do? Like we're trying to rip them off. We're trying to do all these things. And the answer, which they gave us, was literally you have to touch one, hold hands with someone else, and they have to touch the other one. And we were just like, you could give us four days with the amount of information we had. 
we would not have come up with that. We would not have been like, meet me here. You know, you know what's also interesting is with certain games, knowing the the mechanics and knowing um like I don't want to say the rules, but like if you're playing a game that's a that's a non fantasy game, right? Okay. And you're playing a game that's in, uh, like, say, like a revolutionary war game, and you're walking around in the game and this and that, and you got your troops like going through the going through the woods, and then all of a sudden a dragon flies out of the sky, and burns your army. You're like, well, I wasn't looking for a dragon because we're in the American Revolution, <laughs> <laughs> so like. You know, like that hint of like, you know, keep your eye on the sky. Like it, it doesn't mean look out for a fucking dragon because I didn't know we were playing by those rules. Like you just added an element that doesn't seem like it goes here. Yeah. Which like, okay, you can. It's a game. You can do whatever you want. You can, you can have do fucking, whatever you want. You know, you, you can have God show up. But, yeah. Uh, that seems like one of those things yeah. where they added this element that's like kind of now getting out of the out of the the realm of like the rules um but yeah i i I see what you're saying yeah so like there are times like that that like i'm just like you kind of have to but you don't know which is which you know what though until the answer uh with that one exception of the picture or of the the surveillance cameras yeah uh thing i think if you're playing a game that's a puzzle game and you get to the point where you just like you want to get to the next thing you're not in the right mindset to play that game and have fun you're in, that's true. You're in the mindset of like, I just want to go to the next level. And it, that's not the point. The point is to get to the end of the game by yourself. <laughs> it's funny that we're bringing... It, we're kind of skewing this into board games instead of video games. But we are. But it all still applies. My coworker, Allie, who has been on the Pro Down podcast, they did one Shout of those out. games with, uh, with her family recently. And they did two in one night because they were like short one-shotters. And she's like, the second one, it was a board game, Escape the Room. And she's like, we got to a point where we had to do something with keys. She's like, we couldn't figure it out. And the timer went off. And she's like, and at that point, all of our kids looked at us. And they were like, we've been playing board games for three hours. Everyone have a nice night. We're going to go do our thing. (laughs) So she's like, they left. She's like, Larry and I are still looking at each other like, we got to get this done. (laughs) They're still still working on it. Yeah. It's been like two days. Yeah, no. The, remember the game Mist? Yeah. So that is probably, and again, there's probably some part of it that's hard because of the time it was made and the mechanics of the game. Plus it was new. And it was new. Like, it's very choppy in a lot of ways. Uh, you don't really know what's what. But it's a still frame. Pick the, Pick out the clues. Put it together. And my dad played it every day. Like, in the free time. Like, he would get, like, less sleep for the very few hours that he got sleep, but he had a whole notebook. He had like toggle switches, ones that he had tried and like all this shit. And that game, there was no clues. Your clues were what you found. Yeah. There was no guide to get through that game. You just had to go. I'm sure now there is, but like that was one of those games where you bought it in the back one. Like if you couldn't beat it, sorry, yeah. you, you're not good enough. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, that's kind of what it is. But you, I kind of like that aspect of it. I know. Like that game, that game to this day, I mean, I, I don't play, like I'm not a huge video game guy because I'm very limited in what I play. But a, that game to this day, I think is one of the hardest games to to play through with no help. Yeah. Because. From start to finish. Yeah, because you, it's, it's. I don't know how many people have played it, but I guarantee you the amount of people that actually finish that game without looking up how to do it is probably in the one to five percent. That's right. How many games are like that? There's been a recent surge of games that uh, that aren't that hard, but are approaching that level. The names are going to escape me, but like there was this one game I played where like you had to solve little picture puzzles. You literally, like, had to draw a line from, like, there to there. And they got more complex as time went on and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you realize that it's not just the pictures you have to do this in. You can do it everywhere. So, like, you'll see, like, in the background, like, a uh, a, uh, a wheelhouse. What, what am I thinking of? 
of windmill. Thank you very much. This is why we're friends. So a windmill <laughs> going around, and you have to wait for it to hit a certain point, and then you quickly use your icon to go over. But even in that game, I got the points where like I would spend like three hours on a puzzle. I guess that's my limit, three hours, because then I'd be like, I got to know what it is. Got to do it. Yeah, so there was – Or a, I at least got to know what this little thing does. Yeah, there's there's something to be said about figuring shit out for yourself and not yeah. – like we live in a very pay-to-play – like everyone wants to know what the spoilers are. I can't – I cannot stand people that ruin spoilers on purpose. Bro. I, I – especially with movies – Especially if it's a movie that somebody knows that I like the genre of or like the series. Like with Batman, like, and some people are solid with it. Like, yo, you see the new Batman yet? Like, no, I don't say anything. They're like, okay, got you. And other people are like, bro, can you believe that the Joker shoots Batman in the shoe? And you're like, no. fuck off. So, quick spoilers for Skyrim <laughs> came out 12 years ago. But I remember there's this part in Skyrim, it's not. So Skyrim has like all these quests, right? And you always get quest markers for them. There's this one thing where it's not a legitimate quest. So you don't get any quest markers. It's just like open knowledge that it's there. Like you just figure out like, oh, there's shit that matters. Yeah. So you have to collect all these masks. And then there's this one wooden one that doesn't do anything except if you wear it in a spot. Long story short, I had one question on it because I wasn't sure about something or I had lost a mask and I was like, I need to figure out how to get it back. So I went to Reddit and I, in a very, not super detailed post, but I said, listen, I don't want spoilers. I don't want to know anything more than what I'm asking, but please tell me what I'm missing for this thing. Yeah. Whatever my question was, I can't remember exactly what the question was. And the first guy to respond that said, oh yeah, well you do get a cool, or uh, you do get a cool mask when you finish. And I was like, bro. I like I the amount of times I said no spoiler, no spoiler, no spoiler. You told me what I what I get. You 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 literally went to the worst place ever for no spoilers. The internet. I did. You did. I, did. You, I mean, I'm clearly you, salty you about it. it was the, this probably happened like five years ago. Yes, but you you have to see the irony in your request. I know. Of you like, hey, nation of trolls, please don't troll me. And they're just like, this fucking guy's new. He must be new. Yeah, you want to know how the, the the game ends? We'll tell you that too. Um, yeah, so fucking Fuck. uh, which we'll call it. Uh, two more things, and then I'll, then I'm done talking. The Fair. one of the reasons why I hate spoilers so much, and and if you recall, missing out on like a part of like a movie or something. So the one movie I never like watched growing up. Uh, just because I didn't watch it, but it's a pop, very popular movie is Usual Suspects, mm -hmm. right? And I'm very good at remembering movies. If I was as good at school as I was at that, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I remember I just ha missed that one. Growing up, I just missed it. Yeah. And it's not like it was because I was rated R. Like I watched it rated R all the time when I was a kid. So I missed that one growing up, and I remember that one was, like, one of the first, like, reveal movies that was, like, really popular. We were like, oh, my God, what? And I remember that when I watched the movie, I was like, oh, I know who it is. You know why? Scary movie. Spoiler alert. Scary movie had a parody of Kaiser Soze, and it was Goofy. Or Doofy. Yeah. And at the end of the movie, Doofy's walking with his limp, and he starts walking straight. And he takes off his jacket and he gets back. And that's the ending of Usual Suspects. Verbal Kint is the guy. And he does that. But, like, I remember watching that and being like, damn it. But just being like, the movie was so not interesting to me. Yeah. Because. You knew. I knew who it was. So all those things, I just like, it's like if you knew who the murderer was and then you watch the movie and you're like, oh, it's so clear who it is. And you're like, but it's not. It's not because you know. Yeah. You're putting the pieces together after you found out. So you, that, don't, you to, didn't get the mind explosion at the end like you're supposed to. Yes. And that's it's almost like when you when you tell somebody about like the first time you saw X movie in the movie theater, like a good one I always bring up is like the movie 300. Mm -hmm. That was like one of the first movies when like like everyone was jacked in it. They're like super crazy visuals. The music scores were fucking all like they just up the level yeah. of everything. And that was a huge movie. Like, everyone went and saw that. And, like, you watch it today and you're like, 
It's all right. All right. Like if you just never saw it before, but you can't see what that's like back then. It's like watching, like talking to your parent about when they first saw Star Wars yeah. versus if you just watched it now, you're like, this is stupid. Yeah. You're like, everything looks fake. And you're like, what? It's real as shit ever. And the last thing I want to bring up is remember when, uh, uh, getting back to the puzzle games, is when uh, you had an entire thing set up. Oh, for my the God. I, I, we're just at the point where we're telling stories on the podcast. <laughs> That's fine. Because I'm very good at those, like, look at a thing that's supposed to be another thing and figure it out. And that was... <laughs> so for our uh, audience out there, we are D&D nerds. And we were playing D&D, and I come up... I was DMing for the very first time. And I had come up with this scenario where I had a loot box for them to get. For them to get into the loot box, every two minutes, a bad guy would come. No, and- a team. It was like 10 zombies or some shit. No, hold on. No, oh. I remember. It started off with a skeleton, oh, and okay. every time it was going to add another skeleton. Mm. So I think I might have started with three or something like that, but it would have been three, then it would have been four, and the whole point, and one of you, if you were trying to solve it- Couldn't fight. Couldn't fight. So the whole point was to get you guys frustrated- I felt And bad. like <laughs> doing whatever, and the puzzle was a real life puzzle lock. You had to figure out- this lock that had like this like trick to opening it. And as I was giving out the instructions, you have figured it out and you're like done. And I was like, (laughs) I was so proud of myself for coming up with this elaborate spot. Cause I was expecting you guys to leave and come back and be like, let's give it another go. And we're like trying to like, be like, Tim, come on, give us the lock. So you can like solid on the side or something like that. And you had figured it out in about like not even a minute like it took about probably like 40 seconds i was so mad so mad flipping tables kind of mad you know when like everyone's playing a game or something and you know that you're like pretty decent at a certain thing but like you don't want to be like give me that yeah like i think it was i think jamie was like looking at the lock or whatever and i just like like you were reading i was like i'm like uh let me see it for a second <laughs> And she's like, all right, like here. And I like looked at it and I'm like. <laughs> and you were like, like the look in your face. You were like, fuck you. I'm like, I, I do feel bad because that was like a really good. That was a really good setup. It was such a good setup. It was really good. I wanted to see you guys in turmoil. I wanted you guys to like have the conversation of how much is this going to be worth it? The one time. We try to make it turmoil. It doesn't end up turmoil. All the other times, it's simple. It's like, uh, who's going to loot the uh, you know, the squirrel? Everyone's like, I want the squirrel's tail. <laughs> like, no, I need his eyes. You can't have it. <laughs> Roll for initiative. <laughs> <laughs> We're fighting to the death in real life. In real life. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. That's it. That's it. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you for being a friend. Well, do you know that song? Neighbor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Don't forget to go to brodownpro.com. We have a bunch of cool stuff. We just told the D&D story. We have D&D stuff for sale Shit right now on that website. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell notification so you get all of our videos. And we will catch you guys next time. Later. You're listening to Bro Down Podcast all fucking